Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about working with multimedia devices. We're going to talk about what's in our CompTIA a requirements for test 220-601. That's the, the essentials exam in section 1.2, where we need to know how to add, remove, and configure basic input and multimedia devices. Today we're going to learn about multimedia devices such as digital still cameras, webcams or web cameras. We're going to talk about digital video cameras. We're going to also discuss microphones and finally end our conversation talking about something called MIDI. Let's start our conversation today with digital cameras. Of any other multimedia type that's out there, digital cameras has probably had the largest growth in our industry. These take amazing still pictures. There's certainly more of these sold today than traditional film cameras, but they can also do video. So these aren't just single still type cameras. There are limited video capabilities on most models of digital cameras today. Whenever you start to look at the digital cameras and their specifications, one that will always pop up is something called megapixels. Megapixels refers to the millions of pixels available on a single still image inside of this camera. So when we take a picture, the number of pixels might be 8 million pixels, it might be 5 million, it might be 10 million, and you'll hear that referred to as the number of megapixels. The larger the megapixels, the clearer that picture is going to be. But the larger the megapixels also, the larger the size of the files that is stored onto the storage inside of these devices. And you're going to see a lot of different kinds of storage technologies. One that is very common and one that we see traditionally on older types of multimedia devices is Compact Flash. Compact Flash is one that the industry has really rallied around because it is so fast and it will store, also has some of the largest storage sizes out there. There. That is quickly being eclipsed on the um, the consumer side with something called secure digital. These are smaller types of memory, and they also are now approaching very large storage capacities on those as well. Uh, other than those two, you'll also see some other scattered formats, some of them proprietary, especially from Sony. Kodak has a number of formats that they use, something called XD that's in their, their cameras that they've used in the past. And so you'll see that not every camera uses the exact same type of storage. So when you're buying a camera or you're looking to add more storage capacity to a camera, make sure you refer to the manual of the camera or what's in there already and get the exact same type to go along with it. Another type of camera is something called a web camera or webcam you'll hear it referred to. These are live motion cameras that connect to your computer, usually via a USB connection. That's a great place to plug in because first it's very standardized. As long as your computer has a USB connection, I can use one of these kinds of cameras. These are also nice because uh, the USB connection supports such high speeds. We're doing live video here, so it requires quite a bit of bandwidth. You don't usually use this type of camera to take still pictures, but you could use this technology to take still pictures. Because it's tethered to your computer, though, with this USB connection, you obviously can't take it very far to do those still pictures. These are usually for live video and not usually video that is stored. But these cameras usually come with software that allow you to capture and store to your hard drive the type of video. Usually you're using a separate type of video camera like the one I'm talking into that's designed just for doing live video for storage over long periods of time. You'll notice on the new laptops and new displays, there's a little tiny hole at the top for the camera. So they're very small. You almost don't even see them. And we're seeing them spread across the industry with these laptops and these new displays that are coming out. Another type of camera that's becoming extremely popular primarily for its price point and its capabilities are these new lines of digital video cameras. They don't have any tape inside of them. It is all a memory type storage. It can be a hard drive inside of it. It can be flash memory inside. It may be self-contained memory inside of these devices that you can't pull out. In those cases, the devices like this flip camera that I have on the screen, these have connections of USB built into them. So you don't have to pull out any memory. Memory. You just plug into a USB connection and you transfer over the information, the video that you've stored on side of the memory of that device. 
These can also connect digital video cameras via FireWire. You may hear this referred to as IEEE 1394. Other manufacturers use the term iLink. These days, the USB type connections are becoming much more popular. It seems that FireWire is only on the higher end systems, higher end desktops, higher end laptops, so that you have to be sure that the digital camera you get is able to plug into the system you have. And USB just seems to be a lot more popular. So you're seeing a lot of these lower end consumer type cameras just come with USB connected on them. Once you've taken these pictures or you've taken this video, now you're going to want to transfer it down to your computer so that you're able to use it. There's a couple of ways to do this. As we mentioned earlier, FireWire and USB tend to be some very popular methods. There's also devices like this printer that has memory card technology built in right to the front. So you take the card out of your computer, out of your, uh, out of your camera rather, and you come right over to the printer. You bypass the computer entirely. And right on the front of the printer is a, sp uh, the, a slot here for a compact flash. There's also a slot for SD card card and XD cards and other types of memory, like a memory stick. And you plug them right in. And then on the little LCD display on the printer, it will show you the pictures that you've done. And you can simply click one button, and it prints out that picture for you. And that's great if you don't have a computer anywhere around. You just need a quick picture. You obviously can't do a lot of editing in this type of environment. But if all you need is a quick picture, this is a great way to do it. One of the challenges you really get into when working with digital cameras, digital still pictures, digital video, is transferring it and storing this information. Unlike this video, which in 10 years, this technology will be well beyond what we're doing here. It won't apply anymore. As time goes by, the video you're watching will become less valuable as we go. Pictures are exactly the opposite. If you're taking pictures of your family, those pictures get more valuable as time goes by. So the, the ability to transfer these and store them somewhere becomes extremely important, not just for your still pictures, but now for video, which requires a whole lot more storage of what we're doing. So you have to think about that as you're going through the process of where you're going to transfer this information from and to and what you're going to do with it. Because you need to be sure you have a backup method in place. You're keeping multiple copies of it. Maybe you have off-site storage. All of these things should be thought about when you're looking to transfer and use these pictures in this video later on. Let's talk a little bit about microphones. When we're dealing with multimedia devices, certainly microphones applies. And these days, when you're doing a lot of web conferencing, you're doing a lot of third-party conferencing, multiple people in the same conference room, you're going to want to have a microphone on your system. Now, the microphone I'm using here is a professional mic. It's plugged into a mixer, which is plugged into a USB-connected audio input device. That's not normally what you have on your traditional laptops and desktops. What you'll normally have is a microphone that might be a single microphone on your desk like this. It might be integrated into your monitor. It might be integrated into your laptop. Or you may want to plug in a separate USB-connected device. This is a really nice one from Plantronics, which has both a headphone and a microphone built into the system. These are all integrated together. And you'll see these a lot already ready to go inside laptops these days. But usually, you may, on the desktop systems, have a third-party product like this Plantronics headset microphone combination. So you can plug in, and people can hear what you're saying, and you can hear what they're saying. Another type of multimedia interface that you'll sometimes see, not usually in a business environment, but you'll often see it in consumer environments, is something called MIDI, or Musical Instrument Digital Interface. MIDI is a very common interface that's been around for a long time. It's been an industry standard since 1983. That's how long it's been around. And if you ever see the DIN interface, D-I-N, the DIN interface on the end of these, they're, they're these larger DIN sizes. You don't really see ports that big anymore. This particular device is one co uh, from a company called M-Audio that takes my MIDI connection and converts it to USB so I can connect to computer. You'll notice you don't see these MIDI connectors on computers anymore. You used to have to buy very specialized cards, adapter cards to go in your computer. These days, you just buy an interface like this that allows you to plug in via USB. It is becoming that universal serial bus. There are also MIDI connections that connect via Ethernet. A number of the mu musician friends I have will set up multiple MIDI connections into their computer and just connect them all with Ethernet. That way, they don't have to have many different MIDI connections going in and out. They just have a single Ethernet connection that everything rolls through. In review, we've talked about digital still cameras. We've gone through the web cameras. And we've talked about digital cameras and what's important about those and what we should think about when working with transferring files. We've also discussed microphones. And finally, we ended up with a discussion of what musicians are using to connect their equipment, something called MIDI. 
For more videos, for our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.